In the particular case of Colston, uh, this debate has been there since the 1980s when uh, we had also demonstrations in Bristol uh, against police brutality that brutalized indeed the populations of African descent uh, in Bristol. And since then, the past uh, of the city that is associated with the Atlantic slave trade has been challenged. Among others, then the, uh, the, the, the figure uh, of Colston has been challenged and uh, despite all the efforts of politicians, historians, members of the black community, uh, black uh, citizens in general, uh, nothing was done in terms of either contextualizing that statue or removing it to put it in a museum or uh, either to create a, a counter monument. And now uh, the population took this, Black Lives Matter took it, um, it does the, the the problem in its own hands and this is what happened so does that statue belong on a pedestal in the harbor or in a museum i believe that that it's time for that statue to to go to a museum to a museum where uh, it will become then um, a, an object that can be studied as part of its time the, then the the 19th century that where uh, historians can also contextualize who was colston and uh, I think that people who are seeing that statue uh, on a daily basis in Bristol, they were not learning uh, much uh, about Colston or about the city's slave past from where the wealth of the city was built. And I believe that in a museum, uh, it's going to be a place where that statue is going to be much more useful, let's say that way. Mahadu Ali, do you agree? Yes, I do agree. Statues, those statues specifically um, belong to museum, not out in the public, especially when we are minority people, black people that have to see it on a daily basis. And it's a constant reminder of the damage that, and the pain that have been caused. Erin Thompson, your thoughts? Well, as long as we've been making statues, we've been knocking them down. And I think the most crucial thing to understand here is that many of these statues that have been toppled in recent days, there have been decades or longer of peaceful protest. And if people are not sure that their voices will ever be heard in a peaceful way, you can't be surprised if uh, they're gonna take actions into their own hands. Uh, to feel part of a society, to feel part of what the society's version of its official past is, you have to, um, fight for this sometimes, and that's what we're seeing, uh, people fighting for the future by arguing about the past. So I think there are many ways this debate can take place and has taken place. Destruction is just one of the Okay, so let, let's, take, let's take a pause here, Aaron, and um, let me just ask you, what is a statue? What is its purpose? Well, it depends on the, the statue and where it is, but a lot of these statues we've been seeing are statues that are for the purpose of glorifying one person for establishing an official version of the past. And so what's really being protested against are the invisible messages that these statues give off to often the minority inhabitants of the city, the region, um, that this person belongs on a pedestal and not you. So one way of countering that would be to erect counter monuments or other monuments glorifying other people instead of just taking down the the controversial statue. But you know what? It's a little cheaper to just remove. And when you heard Ana Lucia Rajo say at the start of the show, a lot of people walking past the statue of Edward Colston really don't know who he, he was and didn't care. Uh, exactly. And uh, the same thing is going to be true in a museum in most cases. Uh, Bristol has just revealed that it plans to exhibit the statue of Colson with the protest paint still on it, with the rope still tied around him that had been used to pull him down, and with a tire that they pulled out of the harbor with him. So that's a very striking way of exhibiting double layers of history. But I think just taking statues off of pedestals and putting them in museums isn't really going to change uh, the message they're conveying.